Hey guys, it's Alex, and today I'm here with my 2019 goals reflection. 2019 was the first year I set goals. I don't think I hit like any of them. Like literally, I don't think I hit a single one, but I got fairly close on some of them. So I'm quite pleased with that. Um, it was my first year ever setting goals. So I just don't think I knew what kind of goals to set, what things would work for me. And I do think in 2020, I did a better job of just like setting better goals because I had these in mind and I had my failures in mind. So let's take it as a learning year and then continue on from there. So I did fail most of these. Um, the only ones, the only two that I actually hit, I wanted to read 100 books in the year, which was my Goodreads goal. I read 139. Yay, I guess. I don't really care about that goal. That's just like always what I set it to be. The two books a week thing is just something I like. Two books a week plus two weeks to fail is a good goal for me. I like the hundred books a year pace. I never feel pressured. I can hit it comfortably. I usually hit it, but you know, last year I didn't. So this year, 139 books. Pleased with that. The other goal I hit was my rereadathon goal. I wanted to reread 12 books for the rereadathon, one for every prompt. I wound up rereading like 40 some books total that year, which was which is pretty nice. Like that was a lot of rereading. I kind of burned myself off on rereading a little bit, but it was so much fun. And I did actually reread books for each of the 12 prompts for the rereadathon in a mostly timely manner, but I was way late on the November prompt and didn't get through it until like mid-December. So <laughs> I'm still going to count that one as a success. Now we get into all of my lovely failures. I had five books that I wanted to read during the year of 2019, <laughs> just five that were on my like list of books I really want to get to this year. The two that I read were The Casual Vacancy by JK Rowling. I read it, I really enjoyed it, I gave it four stars. And then Jurassic Park, which I also read and loved and gave five stars. Like The fact that I loved both of those books really should have meant that I continued on and read the rest of them, and I didn't. I didn't even read the sequel to Jurassic Park. I don't know why, I just never read it. So I didn't read The Lost World, but the other books on my list that I didn't read were Dracula by Bram Stoker, Lord of the Rings by Tolkien, and Someday Someday Maybe by Lauren Graham. Hopefully I'll get to them this year, but that's not a specific goal. I'm just kind of bummed that I only had five, <laughs> five books, and I read two of them, which is like unnecessarily bad, I think. I wanted to branch out a little bit more into the sci-fi genre this year. I pretty much never read science fiction before, and I wanted to try it to see what I liked, what I didn't like, all of that. I wanted to read 10 books in 2019, and I wound up reading 6, which is a failure, but I do think I'm actually really happy with that. It's a lot for me, just in general, and I, I read 6. Like, I think 6 is a solid try. And I'm happy with all of these <laughs> attempts that were just, as long as they were solid tries, I'm happy with them. But the six science fiction books I read this year were The Meg by Steve Alton, Jurassic Park by, oh, who wrote Jurassic Park? Michael Crichton. I, I didn't write down surnames. I didn't write the... <laughs> I didn't write down the author's names that I really should have. Scythe by Neil Schusterman, Vicious by B.E. Schwab, and Yara by Harry Martinson, I think, and Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey. So those all range from about two stars to five stars, which pretty much just confirms that sci-fi is just like every other genre. Some of it you like, some of it you don't. So I do feel a lot more comfortable in the genre now, so I do think I succeeded in that regard, even if I didn't like hit the actual number. I do feel a lot more comfortable. I do plan on continuing the Expanse series, of which Leviathan Wakes was the first book, so I'm very pleased with that because that's like a whole long space opera series that I can now read. I wanted to read 15 new fantasy novels and I read six, so that was... I'm not gonna call that a fail, but I don't think that was a solid try in the same way that the sci-fi one was. I also only read young adult fantasy novels. I think they're all young adult, which is disappointing to me. I really wish I had read more of a variety of like middle grade, young adult, adult, but the fact that they were all young adult, new to me fantasy, I didn't count rereads. The six was kind of a disappointment, but the six I read were Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nyan, The Wrath and the Dawn and the Rose and the Dagger by Renee Audier, Tempest and Slaughter by Tamara Pierce, Tortal, A Spy's Guide by Tamara Pierce, and Three Dark Crowns by somebody, Kendar Blake. <laughs> Those are the six I read. All YA. I'm not super pleased with that, but I did thoroughly enjoy most of those. Um, well, it was about half and half. Well, it was maybe less than half and half. I, I enjoyed a few of those. I do plan on continuing on the Three Dark Crowns series. I have the next couple checked out from the library, so that's going to be 
a project for this year. I'm very pleased that I did actually get to that book. I wanted to read 10 classics this year. I read three, which I'm very disappointed with. I read Aniara by Harry Martinson, which is a sci-fi space opera poem. Um, interesting. I'm counting it as a classic because it's more than 50 years old and it has some sort of critical acclaim, which were my two standards for that. So I, it counts according to my standards, even if it's not well known. I also read 1984 by George Orwell, which was a reread, which I hated. And I read Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf, which was not a reread. I didn't hate it, but I didn't particularly enjoy it either. It was one of those where I was like, this is not for me. I am not the audience for this book. And it was disappointing because I really thought I might be. But mostly I'm just kind of mad in general that I only read three classics. I tried to read Dubliners, I read like half of Dubliners, and then I just like stopped picking it up. So that's what I'm going to try to finish in like January of this year. Um, so I read like three and a half, if we count like half of Dubliners, since that was a short story collection. I wanted to read three poetry collections or poems or any kind of poetry. I wanted to read three of them and I only read one, which was Anyara by Harry Martinson. Like, thank God I read that because that counted for like three of my challenges. That was the only one I read. I'm not mad at the skull though because I don't read much poetry, so honestly even reading one was an accomplishment for me. So I'm okay with that. Hopefully in 2020 I will be able to read a little bit more though. I wanted to read five anthologies, and of those I read zero, which is a bummer. Um, I don't even have a justification for this, I'm just lazy and didn't pick up any because they're always a little bit extra effort just keeping my attention even when I really enjoy them. So yeah, hopefully next year I will read more than that. And then the last of my individual challenges was to read five hard nonfiction books, which was a terrible goal for myself. Um, I didn't know how to count that. Like, I didn't know what that meant to me. I thought I did at the beginning of the year. And then as I was going through, I was like, I don't think that counts. I don't think that counts. And it was like, nothing counted for it. So it was just too vague. It was too vague of the goal to be useful. I did wind up reading like 29 nonfiction books. So I'm pleased about that. The four I read that I feel like would kind of count for this, I read Betrayal at Little Gibraltar by William Walker, which was a military history book about World War I. It was kind of interesting, also super not my thing, so I didn't retain a lot from it, or I retained some, but it was definitely like above my comprehension level. I also read The Radium Girls by Kate Moore, which was wonderful, really, really loved that book. I read a bunch by John Krakauer, so I'm just counting him in general, and then I read a couple of Eric Larson's books, which again, just counting him in general. I also listened to two audiobooks by Bill Nye, who was Bill Nye the Science Guy, which kind of counts, kind of doesn't, I don't know. That was just a bad challenge, but I do feel like I was comfortable with the nonfiction that I read this year. I had an arc pile that I wanted to get through that had eight books in it. That arc pile still has eight books in it. I didn't touch a single one of those. I did read and review a book that I received, but that was a new one that I received this year, so it didn't count towards that pile at all. So at least it didn't get bigger, but I am kind of bummed that I didn't read a single book from that stack, and that's something that I really, really need to get to soon. So for channel goals, I wanted to hit a thousand subscribers this year. Clearly, I did not do that. I'm hovering around the 750 right now. Kind of bummed that I didn't hit a thousand, but also like I knew I didn't actually have much control over that. It's fine. I'll live. I would like to hit a thousand this year. Like I didn't make that a specific goal, but it'd be nice to hit a thousand. I'm very happy to be at 750. I think that's kind of awesome. And I'm still like blown away by the fact that anyone watches me. So I'm not bummed about this goal, but like hopefully that'll be a 2020 thing. I also wanted to film a book review for every book I read with like few exceptions for like audiobooks and things that I just really didn't want to film a review for and I think I did do that. The only books that I have left on like a stack, I didn't avoid anything just because I ran out of time to review it. I actually like sat down and reviewed everything. The only ones I haven't yet are books I read in December, which I'm okay with. I don't know what I'm going to do with that going forward because I do like reviewing every single book I read within reason. Like I don't do audiobooks and then there are some books that I just like don't have enough thoughts on for a review. But in general, I do prefer to review pretty much everything I read. Only when I'm reading like 139 books, that's 139 different reviews. 
which is an excessive amount of reviews. I have to film them, I have to edit them, I have to upload them, and people don't want to watch that many reviews. So I have to figure out what I'm going to do with this going forward. But for the time being, I'm probably just going to keep doing this. This is kind of just like par for the course for me. I like reviewing everything I read. It's just sometimes it's a lot. I also wanted to host a read-along for one of my favorite books. Did not do that remotely, like didn't even start or try to do that. <laughs> I just like chickened out every time I thought about it. Um, maybe I'll do it this year, but it's not a priority for me. Um, sometime I would like to host a read-along, it's just that I don't know that I really have the subscriber base to do it, and I would have to like bully people into it, and most of the things I'd want to do it for are like backlist books that maybe a lot of people haven't heard of or are hard to acquire, so I don't know. For the time being, that's kind of on the back burner. I wanted to create fewer TBRs as well, and I actually found something that really worked for me here. I started doing them every month in my vlogs, and I would only include books that I had some sort of obligation to read that month. Like either they were due at the library, or I was buddy reading them, or reading them for a book club, or something along those lines. And because of that, I wasn't just including books like, oh, I want to read that book this month. It was like, I have to read this book for XYZ reasons this month. And then that gave me a lot of leeway to mood read. So I'd only have a couple of books on my TBR every month, and then I would mood read like a bunch more. And I think that really did help. I think that's why I went up like 40 books in my reading from the year before, and it really did help me. So I think I'm just going to continue doing that. I enjoy doing that. It doesn't make sense not to post a TBR at all when I do know like three or four things I'm going to be reading this month, because it's like, well, I have my rereadathon book and like this buddy read and that book club, so there's like three books right here that I know I'm going to read this month. And it doesn't make sense not to film anything, but I also don't want to just pick a bunch of books at random and be like, these looks good, let's read them, because I never did. So that works for me really well, and I'm very happy that I did find something there. And then finally, I wanted to participate in fewer readathons, and then participate instead in more buddy reads and read-alongs. So I think I did really good with this, actually. I kind of stopped participating in readathons at all, because I figured out that they're cool in theory, but they don't work for the way I read, which is like, TBRs and stuff don't work for me. I'm a mood reader. I like to pick up things at random, unless there's a very specific reason. I'm not doing that. So I did start doing buddy reads regularly. I buddy read a lot with Cozy Reader Kelly a couple of times with Dane from Dane Reads and Kylie A and Abby Mac Reads and just like I had buddy reads scattered throughout the year, which was really nice. And I'm really glad I did that because buddy reading is like a super fun experience. And I didn't really participate in any read-alongs, but I did have two book clubs that I participated in. I did the Literary Alliance book club on Facebook from about January or February through August. They picked a book every month and read the book in a Facebook chat and everybody just kind of like talked about it throughout the month, which was fun. I wound up leaving them though just because their tastes didn't really align with mine. Like super fun book club, I'll link them down below if you're interested. Just like not really for me. So I, I left that and then there was the crime scene read along that Joni Reads and Cammie's Corner were hosting where they picked a true crime book and read it every other month and did a live show, which was so much fun. I think they stopped doing that though, so those both kind of died around like, I quit the Literary Alliance in August and the last one for the True Crime Book Club was in September, so those both died around then and I'm kind of looking for like a new regular like monthly or bi-monthly book club that I can participate in. So looking for that, hopefully we'll either find one or create one of my own because I would like to do that again this year. It was really fun. But I am glad I branched out because that is like a good way for me to get involved in the community where readathons kind of weren't. So I'm very happy with that because it's like harder to participate in like buddy reads and read-alongs and stuff like that than it is to just do readathons. But also like readathons don't work for me, so it was worth the extra effort, I think. And then my last goals were all related to my book buying and my TBR and that sort of stuff. I wanted to buy fewer books. I wanted to stick specifically to my book wish list, or not specifically to it, but stick to like the idea of the book wish list, not to just pick up a ton of books that like I just didn't know anything about. Like just walk into a thrift store and be like, hey, these 10 books look interesting, and buy them after reading two sentences on the synopsis, because that's what I did a lot. Memma. But um, I did stop doing that. I do have a wish list of like, not like on Amazon or anything. I, I just created a wish list of like here, like a list of books that I actively want to own for specific reasons. And I want to stick to like 
the general premise of the list, which is buying books that I actively want to own. I did better with that this year. I still bought too many books, but I will always buy too many books, so I'm kind of okay with that. And I did curb my book buying quite a bit. I only had like three or four hauls this year, which I think is really good for me. So that was a success. The problem came in my TBR sheet, because I have a list, a spreadsheet on Google, which is linked down below. It's always linked down below in all of my videos. I started the year at 463 and I kind of wanted to get down to below 400 because I was like, that's a good goal. And then like halfway through the year, I was like, that's not going to happen. Let's get down below 450. Currently, I'm sitting at 490. So somehow along the way, I've gained what, like 27 <laughs> books or something like that. That's too much. That's unnecessary. Like, why did that happen? And I looked and I bought 48 books this year that I have yet to read. So books I bought and read are not included in that, and books that I bought that were rereads are not included in that. These are just books I bought, had never read, still have not read. 48 of them. That's a lot. Like, if I had not bought any unread books this year, or not just bought, but acquired in general, if I hadn't acquired any, that number would be like close to 400. I would be close to where I am. I would have been close to my goal, so I'm kind of mad that I bought so many. I'm definitely going to make a big push for that this year to get my goal down. I don't think I'll get it below 400. I don't think that's reasonable, what with me still checking out some books from the library and of course doing rereads. So we'll see how that works. If you ever want to buddy read anything with me, you can check that spreadsheet and be like, yo, let's buddy read this random thing from the spreadsheet. And I'll probably say yes, because I do have almost 500 books on that spreadsheet, so definitely go check that out if you want to buddy read anything with me, because there's a lot there. So I think in general, it was a learning year. Did not succeed on a lot of my goals. Happy with the sci-fi, happy with the poetry, happy with the rereadathon and the number of books I read and the buddy reading. Not a whole lot else, so hopefully my goals will go better in 2020 because I did create them with like more of a specific here's how my brain works and here's how I function as a reader. I had I kept that in mind. I knew how I worked better, so hopefully that'll go better. Let me know down below what goals you set, what goals you hit. If you didn't reach them like I did, you're definitely not alone. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see y'all again soon.